Hello, I'm here in a kind of a suburb of Baltimore, only Mills, where we have my wife's sister lives here. We're heading down to Virginia where my aunt and uncle and mom and stepfather live uh, for Thanksgiving. And it's uh, an interesting drive. It's kind of a, a big drive to just take on, but definitely interesting. Um, drove way, you know, a couple hours out of our way to go around New York and stay out in the countryside. I uh, stayed in Danbury, Connecticut the night before last, got here yesterday, staying here a day. So I haven't had much time for making videos. Um, and also, you know, I just feel that there, we're, we're stuck. I really feel like the next thing to do in my uh, vlogging life uh, is, is to help make this tool so the conversation could just be more structured. And, you know, I put a couple months of work into that since I've been in Maine, but I think for it to really work, you know, it, it has to be some sort of a crowdfunding thing where we could, you know, justify working myself for someone else. Um, you know, when you have to make a living, you know, you have to eat. And I, uh, I could take a lot less than my going rate to do it, but, you know, I can't just ignore my need to pay rent and buy food and stuff. Um, so what I've been doing in that regard uh, might be of interest. It's, it's uh, interesting to me. <laughs> um, you know, I'm a full-stack developer going back to how long I program computers just of necessity. You know, I have experience and been a lead programmer for client software and server software and development kits and all kinds of things, you know, all over the stack. But then the last 12 years, I was working for a, an astronomy uh, institution and observatory, and um, and we built uh, from scratch, basically, well, you know, using open source software as a starting point, um, uh, a new system to change how we were doing our data processing software and have a better automated system. We have a system called the recipe system that uh, accomplishes that, and I'm really finding that this is a kind of a, a you know, it's a cachet, it's a niche in the, in the um, a niche in the, in the software industry I find very interesting, which is uh, kind of c come to the attention of a great many people. Um, we've been solving, you know, so-called big data problems at the edge of our capabilities for decades now, but only really big companies that could afford the labor costs and material costs and the risk of software engineering have, have gotten into it. But right now, every shop owner is generating so much data from all of their, from their cash register and on and on, uh, that they really have the kind of data that only a really giant company would have uh, 20 years ago. So uh, the system that I made at this observatory was open source, so I've been generalizing that, and right now I'm working on using it for a totally different scientific purpose. I'm working in a, the, calling precision agriculture. I have a contract till um, till February, um, and you know, likelihood of of working there after that possibly. There's also I'm talking to people that are doing a, a number crunching the financial area. I found one company that does contracting in this general area and um, they said they were very interested but I'd have to be willing to move to Boston and then I'd have to travel half time. Why Why have to move to where the company is if you're going to be a job that mostly traveling to clients? It doesn't really make sense but you know I'd be willing to do it if I have to but so far so good you know I'm working from my loft there in uh, Maine. Um, so what I'd like to do actually back on this response DB thing or back at you or whatever we call the tool, um, but this structured conversation, you know, dream of making a structured conversation a tool that I've had for 30 years since I started programming. Um, you know, I, I think I know what I'm going to do next uh, as I have time. Uh, I'm going to worked a little bit on this, but uh, make the, the responder tool um, it still will have the video responses, but I'm going to add a little live response thing so that you can kind of, you know, click a button, you know, smart or stupid, funny or unfunny, or, you know, kind of thumbs up and thumbs down, but in a particular category, you know, it's like applying a tag, yes or no. 
and have a button and it'll keep when you press it it knows what time code you press it at so we could get like instant response graphs to videos and this is this is in a category of things where it's like well it doesn't need tons of people to use it for it to be interesting to me i mean i'm interested even to go back and see you know how i mark a video or to use it on my own videos uh, and and have it as a way that to grab highlights out of the video you know if, you know 10 people instant react to a video you know where they all are reacting uh, all positively or negatively at the same time or just reacting at all you know you, i can automatically I already have the software to cut those clips out of the video you know and make a compilation video and things like that and so what i want to do is i'm going to put that up there I'm going to market it finally. I'll actually, uh, because it's, it, this plugin is a private plugin, you have to have the link to get it. You know, it's not a public searchable uh, thing. But I think I'll do that as my minimum viable product. And then what I want to do is go to some crowdfunding source, or if I have to make my own system where people can bid on uh, features they'd want. And some features like uh, supporting some, you know, small community feature on top of what is already in there you know, might be really reasonable. One person might be able to afford it. Other things might be like, well, we wanted to support this kind of video storage server. You know, maybe that would take a couple weeks. And so people can uh, contribute. And when uh, there's, uh, you know, the, the amount of, uh, there's funding for the estimated effort and material costs, like cost of the server or something, uh, when that's met, then we could work on it. And if I have other work, then I would parse that out to other people to do it. If, you know, if I can work on it or if I have to, if it has to be me for some reason, you know, say in some part of the system that it'd be harder for someone else to learn how it works, then, um, you know, it would, then, then I'd work on it or we'd, we'd wait until I had a window uh, in my other work to work on it. And this is sort of something I just want to do because I think it will increase our ability to have good conversations. Um, I don't see it as a long-term way for anybody to make a living because I think we would have the tools after, I don't know, uh, the most, uh, one, uh, what they call FTE year, you know, full-time employee amount of labor, used to call a man year, say, you know, uh, which could be two people working six months or it could be broken down in various ways. Um. I think after about a year of labor on it, we would have something that's, you know, got 70% of what people want. And, um, and anybody should be able to run that software. Anybody should be able to change the client. And, uh, and so I think it's just something that I would like to design for it to be self-sustaining. I'd like other programmers working on it. I'd like a wide variety of applications found. I think there's a lot of practical things. You know, if you had a structured conversation tool, it'd be a great tool for local candidates to do online debates. Often you'll see little uh, smaller races, like for um, you know county council and stuff. People will do online interviews and do debates that way. I think you could do better than that if you had a, a vlog, a video-based. Um, response and rebuttal kind of system where you could describe the rules so you could have all kinds of different debate rules in, in particular because the system the structured conversation system you know has a language for describing those rules so you have a lot of flexibility because i believe different conversations require different uh, kinds of structure and it's really uh, widely varied and i really see this as the next step for me in terms of uh, political activism because you know in terms of other sorts of political activism there's things that are important to me i still spend time on but um to a large degree there's just uh you know it's just the problems that we face i don't think are, are they're not rocket science it's not the hardest thing in the world basically you have to build infrastructure and certain kinds of infrastructure uh, help people create businesses certain kinds make people live longer certain kinds you know uh, just create general um, health and welfare responses. You know, and we know this. We've seen this in the Western world, and now we, even through, like, Peace Corps-type activities, we've learned that, you know, simple things like access to contraception can be, you know, very evolutionary in any culture. And, um, 
you know, and I, I want to get out ahead of some of the things that actually are inevitable, such as, you know, the death of theism as anything more than uh, mythology. You know, I think it's pretty much in the cards that, Christ, you know, 500 years from now, Christianity will be around the same way the Greek stories are. You know, you can make a movie off of some of the stories, and, and there's, uh, you know, it's like the it's like the plays of Shakespeare. There's certain uh, themes and lessons that, that sort of, uh, you know, repeat themselves in, in cultural history and various parts of cultures and subculture. And uh, you'll see it live on in that way. But we need to we need to be ready for what is subsequent to it. And I think in terms of politics, it's like there's no doing anything until we solve this problem we have with the bankers and the banking system and the monetary system itself. Um, there's really no way to properly repair our system without changing that, um, except uh, for things that might help us get to the point where we can change that system, which brings back to the structured conversation. I think people don't really know what they believe as much as they think they do. You know, you argue with people, I argue with people, I'm arguing with this guy right now as a perfect example about essence, whether a thing really has an essence inside it or whether it's just a category that we put something in. And it's like, you know, what's the material difference if it's one way or the other? I mean, you argue with people that are just so sure, you know, this guy's arguing and, and fine, he's, his opinion, but I mean, not to pick on him or anything, but he's arguing in favor of essences and it's like well what's the really what's the ramification of it whether it's an essence or just a category whether you're a nominalist or idealist what is the actual impact on how you reason what you're going to decide what actions you want to take you know and uh, i think people don't really know exactly what they believe and when they learn categories they have too much faith in the reality the essential reality of the categories to really use the categories as they're meant to be used which is comparing with other categories you know you should categorize a bunch of objects you know as many different ways as you think and then compare each categorization and then decide in a particular situation which categories you want to apply say if you're writing a program or creating a governmental policy how will you uh, actually uh, when you you know what abstractions are you going to use to guide your behavior and i think to get better at that people need to know their position and other people's positions better and really um in a way you know i think the emotional satisfaction of the structured tool is if you get into a structured conversation there'll be some rules in the road which you can use to call your opponent to account the real value is really to the opponent because this is a way for people to uh, learn what they are really saying what they really believe in the actual flexibility that they have in the real world to take one intellectual uh, path versus another so um, I also think that working in this big data kind of area and data science as, as they're calling it now is uh, something of potential benefit on the path of the robotization of uh, menial labor I think uh, we are going to a place where we're all gonna have to figure out how can we live when the robots do everything for us you know how are the people that are already gonna have money figure out a way to share money with the people that don't when the robots are doing all the work you know, they, the people don't need a job, the robots are doing the work. How would someone actually go down and get food? You know, it, it changes. This is another reason that the monetary system, besides the corruption of the banking system, this is another reason the monetary system really needs to be rethought. Thankfully, it is being rethought. And I think uh, the best thing I could do in terms of political activism at the moment is to provide a tool. Uh, where we can actually uh, keep track of what we have said, what we think we think at a given moment, and see later uh, a com the comparison between what we had thought we had thought, what we've forgotten that we thought, and what we think we think now, and so on. So, um, yeah, and politically it's hard to get excited unless somebody wants to do something about the uh, banking system, which is why... Uh, you know, I'm all about Elizabeth Warren, 2016. That's right. She can have Bernie Sanders as a vice president. You never know. <laughs>